Good afternoon. Um, this is now my video I had talked about. I wanted to make about to give some ideas on how to build these fallow Kibri slash Fomo houses. And as you can see, this is some of them I just recently bought off eBay. And I usually buy the kits when they're not too expensive, which are still in the box so you can say new old stock new in box nib or that kind of a stuff and um a few of them i had already when i was young one of these is for instance the post office and i think i'm going to start real quick with the differences in the two box styles if you get a box like this here from fellow which is that yellow with this logo here and the lettering the way you see this here this is how fellow sold the kits i think till about 1979 and then in 1980 they went over to this style here and then the one i have underneath here they're both the same i just let me pull that out of here so you have an idea this one here, this was then the successor style on how that looked from that point on. I think it was 1980 um, when that change was done. So they look like this here, fellow. I just wanted to show you that for the completeness, not so much because there's really not much there in terms of the models. But I wanted to point something out. I bought the fallow glue which is this here and i know now why that is not working too well with the zoom in here this is the expert 170492 and this is the one they're currently selling and it has a nice dispenser on it but i found with these old kits this is a model i built which is this here this is b 208 let me zoom back out if it lets me yeah b208 and i actually bought two of them as you can see they're still packed with the rep around it so they probably most likely are complete and you can see this, they have the manuals for most of them in those days they had them on the back on which part goes where and uh, these are the uh um, for the windows, the uh, curtains and stuff like this. And interior, you can see it here pretty nicely. Let me zoom back in. Actually, I am zoomed in. For the store, we have a bed here for the inside. So they're usually put on the windows. And I bought two of them. And I had bought them already in 2020. I came across them. The guy had to. And he sold me two for the price of one, basically. So I bought them. And like I said, this kit is probably from the 1970s. And I put it together. It was complete. And um, you can see, let me see now I got the light. I just want to give you a short. You can see we put the curtains on. On the windows. On both sides. And uh, this is the front, and we have the two doors for the garage here, and they can be opened, so you can open and close them. They're movable. And then you can see we had a slight accident with two parts here. For one is the, um, the rail, which is hard to see in this here. The rail broke here, right here that is broken here and you can see that the rail here had broken out when I took it out of the plastic uh, connector where they actually come on these parts if you have never seen a kit like this before these parts are usually supplied on a cross like this this is how they come out of the injection molding machine at Fallow or Fulmer 
And sometimes what happens is that you have to be careful. You can see this, they break off before you ever get them. So that's why I like sealed boxes better than open boxes. Because if they do have broken off, you can actually, they won't fall out of the box. So this is something you got to be careful with. Now, like I said, is these kits are probably, I have here, which you can see here, the Falmer one, the Bowser, uh, the Kibri one, and um, the little Kibri one here. This is the little water fountain, looks like this here. They're quite old. The Kibri ones, they had the little instruction manual usually inside and you can see it's the same format here someone had started this they put this one together here but it is essentially the same both Kibri and Falmo are or were located in Stuttgart where I grew up and they were pretty close by where I lived you can see this this was this has a price tag on it from back in the days, this one was 90 cents. So this would have been like three Deutschmarks or so at that time. So that tells you how old this is. To the three Deutschmarks, 90 cents. I would say this was probably the late 60s. And plastic has what we call plasticizer in it. When they have these little pellets, they use to feed into a uh, injection molding machine. The uh, plastic then is melted in there and under pressure formed into these individual pieces in the different colors. The pellets are the ones which have already the color. And uh, plastic will do two things. It will, when it ages, it will basically release the plasticizer out of it, which is a chemical substance, and I don't know exactly which one which makes this, which makes plastic elastic. It uh, provides it with this elasticity. And uh, in these cases, the plasticizer goes out and the glue today here, this one here, is um, acetone based. Can we read it? Yeah, acetone. Sometimes it will not focus for whatever reason, but it says acetone. This is interesting. Let me zoom back out. Whoops. Yeah, we can read it acetone. iPhone made a change to their software and that has changed the behavior of the camera. With the zooming, I use an iPhone 12 SE, no, uh, the small one. And, uh, well, anyway, this, this should read acetone. This is interesting. I cannot get this to zoom. Ah. This is, the camera will not zoom. Huh. Okay. Well, anyways, acetone based and the acetone basically usually relieves the plasticizer. And um, this is the first model I have built. I built this in 2020. And I ordered this here from a hobby store in Florida, I believe. They sent me this up. I can't remember what it was. It was six or eight dollars or ten dollars for the bottle plus a few dollars for the shipping. And the uh, glue I'm actually familiar with is this one here. I just want to show you that real quick too, which is the 504. This is the one I, they came in a glass bottle and they would go uh, 504 or 504. One was the smaller one. This was the one we used to use and it had the brush on it and you would brush it on. And then they had the other ones here, 505 was a plastic uh, glue, also the 505, um, which was more like in a cream kind of thing, but not liquid. So um, you can see it here, 
they're showing the 505 and how that is being used here. Uh, it's more like um, paper type glue, but it, it will glue plastic. And then the Unifix T500, that was something else altogether. I just wanted to show you this. This was the original glue, which worked or was made for these plastic pieces here. For this here, what you're seeing here, for all these models I have here, it was the 504 glue. And uh, Fallow says on their website that this is their successor glue to 504. This is supposed to be gluing these type, this type of plastic, what they used there back then. And that was true until I started to work with it. And what I found is that it became very difficult for the glue to actually dissolve the plastic with the acetone because of the lack of plasticizer, which has evaporated out of the plastic over the last 40, 50, 60 years on these old models. And they become, compared to new plastic, very difficult to glue. So, and, uh, for this, so we have to seal. I'm going to take a short break. I will be right back. So I'm back for my short break here. I just had to uh, double check a couple of things. Is what I had started a little bit earlier. I said <coughs> that the plastic loses its plasticizer, and uh, this glue is no longer capable of fully gluing or dissolving the plastic until the acetone has evaporated and then basically melting the plastic pieces together. The other problem you have with in this aging process of plastic is the um, shrinkage of the plastic parts. Of course, in this size, that is not very um, uh, big. You know, these parts do not shrink um, a lot. The most interesting um, discovery in building these old kits. Now, remember, I built those before back in the 70s, late 70s, mid to late, uh, mid 70s, late 70s to early 80s. And this plastic back then was brand new. So I've never experienced these issues. This is why I'm sharing this here in the videos for those people who are interested in uh, getting into this kind of uh, hobby. The green parts here glued extremely difficult to the gray dark gray parts and you can see the uh, dripping this is where the glue actually ran over and i had a little splinter here too and this is when you when you break them off or when i broke them off cut them off because they are now dry and brittle since they don't have plasticizer or not as much plasticizer in there so when they're cut off these parts, um, off that cross they're using, or that skeleton, whatever you want to call it, when you basically, you can encounter parts here, when, they, when you cut them off here, either with a knife or with a little uh, side cutter, diagonal cutter, this kind of stuff, then it is possible that this splinters or breaks the part here which you trying to take off. And as older the plastic is, is more of an issue this is gonna be. So you wanna be ultra careful when you separate the individual pieces from their bone, basically, from their main uh, molding structure here, basically what that is. Um, and so this is what my experience is here is that this became difficult. This was the cause for this here, where that broke off, that was where that was connected to. And this just broke when I took that off. It uh, broke into two halves, just like that. It just snapped. It didn't take much force at all. We got the gutter system pretty well installed, as you can see, that glued okay. Um, the window frames and the windows went okay they didn't have as much of an issue but for whatever reason the green colored stuff 
that was extremely difficult uh, to get that glued. And then the roof especially, this part here, anything attached to this and this, and actually this piece here to either one of the two, and then the whole roof structure to the house, uh, to the side of the houses, that was where this glue here had the uh, biggest issues with. And I didn't have another glue and I didn't want to try when you can see this on how angled actually the, um, because I couldn't properly hold this uh, until it actually had dried up enough uh, to get this on there. So this is kind of unfortunately how it turned out, but I think it could be, it could have been worse, but it took quite some glue um, to get this actually going. The inside, I did not put the uh, black uh, shine through uh, cardboard in there because I didn't have any and I didn't feel like I, I didn't want to run out and buy one. These holes here were already for the follow light bulb holders, the little ones they had. So you would drill a hole into your wood base where that house sits on and you put that in with the wires and then you can run this through and then illuminate it. Um, so this is the first issues I have encountered. You can see this here with this gray plastic here as well um, to make the chimney shoot. Uh, that was the same issue here. Otherwise it went together. This is the first house I have built. And like I said, is it was in the latter part of 2020 um, during the covert lockdown. And um, that was the first time, the last house I must have built, must have been a model, probably 1982, 1983, which is now 40 years ago. So it was like 35, 40 years ago since I built one of those. And I think for the challenges at hand, it came out okay. We did pretty good with it. But this is basically what you have to be careful with um, when you when you build these or when you get them. Is one is the completeness, which is always you don't really know, because unfortunately you never put a, a picture or anything in there, which showed these uh, complete. How should I call them or what are they actually called? Um, parts frame they have numbers on them follow can actually still get you these parts for the better part if you write to them and you tell them there's a number on here as you can see this would be 1108 you said you need a new 1108 usually the way you can tell if something is missing when you see broken uh, or separated corners here, like these parts here, these little holders, when they're empty, then you know that there should have been a part on there. Um, and then you have to dig through the box. Sometimes they get locked into the other, um, you know, things, and sometimes they don't. See this, this is pretty much complete here. And I had another brown one like this where three parts broke off already on the post office. This is now from the post office. And the post office has the manual in here, which looked like this here. Let me go to half. Oh, half is when I'm actually out. All right. And it has the details of it on how this goes together. This is difficult to show right now. But the bigger models from Fala, they all have this in here. Or oh, actually, they have the, uh, here you can see it. They have the complete um, overall, let me see. Zoom in, but not zoom out. We have all the pieces on uh, how they actually came from Fala. On here, let me just show you this here, the, the base plate, this frame, this one here. So you can clearly identify of where what part is and what numbers they are. So on the bigger ones, they did have them. I couldn't remember this. Like I said, this, this has been ages since I've dealt with these things too. And I'm getting back into it. And like a, this post office, for instance, I had this here. And the post office has the... Uh, 
curtains and uh, um, store interiors in here on this here. So you don't have to separate them from the box. They can just be carefully glued inside. So you can see that we have all the signs for the post service and uh, advertising signs. And this is for all the windows. They fold that normally up. Um, probably would be a good idea to press that. So this set is pretty much complete. I had checked that since that box was open. And um, that will be some fun. I built this once and it was a long time ago because I had that post office. And I built that in 1978 because that was one of the first models I actually did get. And um, yeah, let me just show you a Falmo, which is not that well known box here. That is, that was open too. They took the sticker off. There, the same thing here. You can see this. It doesn't look like much, but this is a small house. Again, someone started already building these things. You can see this, they had set in the window frames and they started with it, but they didn't finish it. They separated all the parts out. When they come, when the kit comes in this shape, there's a good chance that something is missing. And then you have to improvise. Fulmo, I think, still exists. And so does Kibri. And they were bought by the guy who bought, po no, Pola was bought by um, Fellow. So this is a Fulmo house from the same time and this was sold by it's amazing Henry's Hobby House I have no clue where Henry's Hobby House was located made in western Germany I would say this is probably early 70s this model here and then uh, yeah, let me show you this here this was Pola was a competitor to all of them I was surprised that I was able to get this. This is the restaurant with the uh, little beer garden out here. And I had the same model. Uh, in my other video, you can see this in my layout pictures I had. It's probably difficult to see. And Polar was bought up by Fallo. They are selling that now as a Fallo model. But this is the original one. This is also around 1975, 1980, 1978, somewhere around there. And they were all, all of these things were made in Germany. So there's no Chinese stuff in here at all. This is all German stuff. I just wanted to show you some of these things. So some of the models I bought are new to me, which I had not bought before. This here is one of them. This is probably a pretty old one from the 60s here. This is this uh, nice little uh, single family home, two level. Um, you can see this here, this box is, uh, I would say 68, 65, somewhere around there. Made in Germany, yeah. Fellow, that is a long time ago. I bought, like I said, is I have been paying, I'm trying to get these kits in this condition where they're in between 10 to $30. That's about where that is at. On the little uh, water fountain, I was lucky. I got it for like five bucks with $3 in shipping because it was so small. And uh, so now is the time the these things do not get any, there's not that much available anymore. So I got four train stations I bought. I got the post office again because that's difficult. Um, I'm still missing one. I got one train station, which is almost impossible to get because it has been discontinued for so long. And uh, I was able to get that. Um, this year, I guess Fallow sold more in the late 60s here until the mid 70s and um, there was probably a bigger interest here in the united states and now comes the american models uh, you know what we have to see what we're going to get there and then usually what i do is or what i used to do is i cut out the cover of the box like this here like you see it here 
and I would put it up on the wall. I don't know why I did it, but this is something I did. So on the first model on this here, I did this too, and I'm gonna keep them. I may put them up on the wall like I used to do, you know, in the room where the uh, train set is gonna be, the whole train setup is gonna happen. But that's basically it. Oh yeah, the follow people, the Dioama people, you know, they do then the paint stuff and everything else. That is a little bit beyond me. What I usually do is I put flowers on here. You know, like you see it in, the, in this picture here. This kind of stuff, these, this type of beautification. Let me see if I can show you this again without knocking all the lights over. The, uh, here you can see it. So you, just, you, have, you can buy this, this green kind of stuff here. They come in different, they look like flowers, or you can buy them from Fala, you still has this. So some of the stuff is available online here and you make these little flower pots out of it. Let me see if we can zoom in. You can see it right here on the balcony. And that is just carefully, just put a little bit of glue on there and then you basically put it on and then you use some color splatters and put some red dots, yellow dots, maybe some blue, and they look like then the uh, butts of the flower butts, basically. Yeah, so this is kind of, this was the catalog from 1978 I used today since I got them. So I wanted to show you this. So this is what I go by. And that's how we're getting this whole thing slowly together. Re-experiencing the assembly of these things, learning from what has changed, what made what is more difficult now, what used to be easier, like with the changes in the plastic. Um, I do not know if there's a better plastic glue, but according to Fala, this glue, the expert glue, should work for these old models. But like I said, since the plastic has changed, now you can really see the breakage here. Let me see if I can zoom in again. We can zoom in, yeah. Now you can really see it there. You can see on where this actually broke, and now I tried to glue it. And uh, let me see if you can see this. This is the over drippings of the glue I had. I had it here on top of the roof when I glued the rooftop on here. And then you can see here too, the kind of difficulty on the side to glue the chimney together. They are not exactly lined up. You can see this. These were two pieces and they should have made a perfect rectangle, rectangle but they didn't. The windows uh, in the roof also glued difficult um, but they stuck after a while because the plastic the clear plastic dissolved better than the gray plastic um, yeah that should give you a pretty good idea and I hope you enjoyed my video and uh, if you know of someone who needs to see this or should see this or might be interested in seeing this you may want to share the link with them Otherwise, I would be happy to if you could subscribe and ring the bell. And for all those people who have subscribed, thank you very much. And we will have plenty more videos coming.